What's going on, everybody? This is Aha Cuss Words and BS Part 2. And to be honest, y'all not gonna like this one. Like, y'all y'all not gonna like Can somebody say y'all not gonna like this one? They not gonna like this one. What's that? In the last video, we talked about the history of a word and does the history of a word govern its usage? And y'all came in the comment section, we had some great engagement, right? People were quoting scriptures? I love when y'all quote the scriptures, man. I don't know if I should be saying it that aggressively, but I do love it, you know what I'm saying? Let's just go straight into this. Let's just dive in, let's just... The question that's guiding this video, are you as the individual and what your intentions are the source of what it means to be profane or filthy or whatever it is, right? Because something we got to admit, right, whether we want to or not, when we read the Bible, when it says the life, that life and death are in the tongue, right, the power of life and death. We read the Bible, it says use encouraging words to lift each other up, not profane, right? The Bible says that, but the Bible does not tell us what the filthy words are. The English language was not around when the Bible was written. The Bible traveled through many different cultures where they're reading these same texts and they're not thinking about all these different words that we think about today. When you read it today, you have to supply what filthy is, what profane is. It isn't just an automatic thing. And that's something we just got to admit, right? So first thing, jumping straight in. Y'all remember that story? It's in 1 Samuel. You got David, Jonathan, and Saul, right? Saul, like, man, this dude, David, man, give me a headache, dog. Like, I got to snuff this, man, you know what I'm saying? He like, man, what's the best way to do this? My son's best friends with him. I got to invite this dude to dinner, you know what I'm saying? Let me get him with the food, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me put something on his stomach, you know? Put something. So he tells his son, invite your boy David over for dinner. So Jonathan goes to David. He like, man, my dad said come over for dinner, man. But David like, nah, man. Your dad trying to snuff me, dog. David don't come. So I'll see, like, where's David at, right? He waiting. Yo, Jonathan, where your boy at? You know what I'm saying? Where's David at? We going? He like, man, dad, like... I try to get on the con, but you know, he don't like mama fool like that. So I'll get mad. He say, you're the son of a perverse and rebellious woman. And for me, you know what I'm saying? I'm reading that kind of like, what? If I'm Jonathan, I'm laughing. Like, what's my dad talking weird like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, son of a perverse and rebellious woman. Like, what does that mean, right? And we... I think many of us miss that this is something in Hebrew that's translated to English, but who gets mad that you know and starts saying you're the son of a perverse and rebellious woman? Nobody I know. And I think the English translators probably didn't want to put the words in there that it really meant. I think son of a perverse and rebellious woman, he's probably saying, you son of a... That's probably like Saul's not even walking with the Lord at this time, right? He's an angry dad. Mad at his son, about to kill somebody, and we think he just come out with some weird, perverse, rebellious language. What do we do with that? All right, number two. I said y'all not gonna like it, right? Like I, I hope y'all keep watching, but I told you you weren't gonna like it. And we go to Philippians. Paul, like, yo, I'm the Hebrew of the Hebrews, tribe of Benjamin. According to the law, your boy flawless. You know what I'm saying? They can't touch your dog. But now, in light of Christ, I count all this mess as rubbish. Okay, I was tracking with the boy, but why did he just break out into old English? Who says rubbish? And that's probably because the translators didn't really want to translate into what it was saying, because Paul's talking about like excrement, like doodle, -doo, you know what I'm saying? Like, can I say doodle, -doo, you know what I'm saying? Like, Paul probably saying, that's all a piece of insert aha, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do we do with that? Is what Paul saying profane? That's what I'm asking us to deal with. How do we wrestle with these texts? And this this is the point of this whole little YouTube discussion. It's part one and it's part two. Gave one side of the argument. Now I'm over here with the other side of the argument and I'm hoping that we listen to each other. It's fine to believe that you are right. It's okay to say somebody's wrong. But it's not okay to be puffed up and be so certain of yourself that you can't listen to another. And stop looking at people on the other side of the argument and trying to come up with a slam dunk and be like, you know what I mean? Like, you might be saying, and I knew you gave us one side, you gave us the other side, but where you stand, you know what I'm saying? And what I want to say, I can understand the other side of the argument. It's just words, it's just the intention. But on the other side, intention is not the sole governor, right? I cannot just say and call my wife anything 
just because I feel like how I feel about it is the real determiner of what it is, right? How it's received also determines whether something is profane. And I, I think in that aspect, that if the culture has outlined certain words, that that should be respected. Now, the other argument, like I said with John, could be America is a large culture with many subcultures. There's a dominant group of people who have defined what these words are and what we should and shouldn't say, but in a subculture, these words are not seen as offensive, they're just common. So why should we have to adhere to what this dominant culture has said if they are not a part of the subculture or they do not define the subculture? And to that I would say, you know, if a group of women start calling each other the B word in an affectionate, endearing kind of way, they can create a subculture there. But my question would be, when you have to think about the text, power of life and death are in the tongue. Speak only words that are uplifting. You begin to reflect on how you speak. Does it ever cause you to reflect on certain words like that? Does it ever get deep enough to where it makes you reflect and think on, man, maybe it's not just how I feel about something. What if I stop calling this person this word and I start calling him queen, calling my brothers king? What if I start using words that were actually meant for the purpose of uplifting, of honoring? Because for me, the thing that hits me in my soul is when I think about those who come out of a, a worldly life, right? They leave a certain life and they start taking their faith seriously. And one of the things I see people do is they start changing how they speak. They'll stop saying certain words that represent an old way of life, an old way of thinking, an old way of speaking. And I've seen people use that as a spiritual discipline to engage in transformation for the sake of Christ. And as it relates to the things that are being said in the scriptures, one I want to point out, it's really a matter of translation, right? If I think about my dad, if my dad start using the word punk or coward, for him, at least for us listening, that's my dad's starting to use some strong language, right? But my dad don't cuss. So I feel like different people have their own definition of what strong language is. They can use strong language without using profanity, right? So in the translation, when Paul says, I count it all as rubbish, and it can be translated as excrement or doo-doo or S-H-I-T, I think it's really a matter of who's the translator, right? If you don't consider any of these to be profane in any of these words. Right? If you feel like, as Christians, we don't say these words because it represents such and such, because it's a degrading word, then you would probably go a different way and translate it. So that's kind of a little fuzzy. I'll admit that. But I feel like we can't go to the extreme of saying that someone is not a believer or not following a Bible or using that as an indicator that they love God or not, or if they take the Bible seriously. I don't think we can just come and say Ephesians. It's the interpretation piece, right? So yes, we can look in the text and we might see certain words are being used, right? But you never seen Christ using words to tear down. Even if he's speaking hard truths to Pharisees, he's hoping that they will turn around. Even when Paul is speaking, the goal is never just to speak freely because you want to be able to say what you want to say or because, you know, whatever the, the reason might be, Christians speak with purpose. And we must think about these texts when Paul is writing. They're not just laws of, are you going to either speak in an encouraging way or not? These are elements for training. I could pose it like this. How will you be not a well or a spring of sea salt, but a fresh water? How will your tongue be a place of life and not of death. I think the culture gives us these words and it helps us to use them as signs that we can continue to walk and progress down the road of speaking life. But if you think that just by not saying these words and you're speaking life, then it's wrong because intention matters as well. But I think on the other end, if you think that your intention is all that counts, then that's wrong because it's, you're part of a culture, you're here, right? How can the harsh things that I say even be filled with purpose and truth and care so that the person I'm speaking it to might be built up so that they might gain life? And I don't know if you agree or you disagree, right? I don't know if you like what I'm saying. I told y'all I wasn't gonna like it, but I feel like it's something worth talking about. So if you rock with it, if you wanna hear more conversations, like this video, share this video, and subscribe. Every subscription helps, I'm telling you. 
And turn on those notifications as well, right? Hit, hit that whole little thing right there. Like, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications so when the more of these come up, you can know. And let's talk. And let's love each other. And let's be family, but let's be truthful. And I'll catch you guys next time.